What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. We're going to be talking about several different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Terrifier, specifically 3 and 4. We'll be talking about Five Nights at Freddy's 2. We'll be talking about Scream 7 a little bit and then we'll talk about Saw 11. So starting off here with Terrifier, Damien Leone had some comments or gave some comments to The Hollywood Reporter recently on cutting down some scenes in Terrifier 3 since it was clocking in over two hours once again. He said, I wound up cutting probably five scenes out of this film and a lot of them I really, really loved. There were some really great character moments that I had to cut out that really fleshed out the relationships a lot more, but maybe one day there will be an extended version. Now, see, here's my thing. Hopefully those scenes that were cut do not undermine certain characters' impacts in the film that I'm about to watch now, in the theatrical cut we're about to get next week, or actually, yeah, this week. And I'm down to see an extended cut if it actually is going to make the movie better. I know that there was that sentiment that they needed to do something to make the film shorter, but not to then say you should also make your characters bare bones and thin and not people I can get behind. I, I don't want that. <laughs> I get it's a slasher film, but I was appreciating what we were seeing with the character work making me care about the protagonists and getting me invested in their survival, etc. I don't want to see us backtrack on that in T3. Now I kind of have a fear that we will, but we'll see. I hope that extended cut actually ends up being better than the theatrical cut if it ever sees the light of day. So he talked about Terrifier 4 a little bit too, gave some clarifying statements or clarifying statement. He said, I have a lot of Terrifier 4 blueprinted now. And depending on how Terrifier 3 does and if it continues to get a good reception and people really want the next one, then that could be something I dive into right away. Now, I was always under the impression that when he told us about Terrifier 4, that wasn't a sort of green light because it's not really greenlit until we see how Terrifier 3 does. But I have all the confidence in the world that we will get a Terrifier 4. I think Terrifier 3 is supposed to be doing anywhere from 8 to 10 million its opening weekend, according to what Box Office Mojo has been reporting. That might have up that might have updated since I last checked it. But let's dive into talking about Five Nights at Freddy's 2. So Matthew Lillard gave this comment to Forbes to confirm his return and also talk about the project a little bit. He said he can't say much, to be honest. I will say that I think the filmmakers have done a great job of learning from the first movie of what fans want. And I think they're giving a lot more of that. It's going to be more exciting. and I think it's going to have more action. It's going to have a lot of character development stuff. It's hard to kiss around it. I think the story ends and this movie ends in a really exciting way. I just want the movie to be scarier, have a scarier tone, creepier atmosphere. That's really all. And I know a lot of you listening to me who are in agreement that the film was not scary and it was pretty bad. You want that. <laughs> you want an actual scary Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Josh Hutcherson did give some hope of that via his recent comments to Esquire, where he referenced the stakes being higher, being scarier. There's more animatronics. He said there's more animatronics being brought in, different animatronics being brought in. And in the world and the world just opens up in the big way he said we're finding the balance right now of building this world and expanding in it in a really cool way but also making sure the characters stay really grounded that's something that i really think that we all fought for in the first film because the world this world that was created in five nights at freddy's is so out there it's so over the top and wacky in a way that to find the emotional truth of the characters was going to be what was going to work again i just want the film to be scary the first film was not scary. A lot of people will say that those games are not scary. I disagree. It's not about the film actually making me have nightmares. That's not what people are talking about. The same argument comes up with Chucky. Oh, Chucky was never scary. Freddy was never scary. It's not about that. It's the tone, the overall presentation. The tone of the first movie is not giving, I want to scare you. It's not giving it. I get that they were trying to appeal to kids and stuff like that, but the games are being played by kids and those games have a far more intense tone to them from what I recall when playing them. And even just from looking at recent gameplay, the games were scarier than that movie. And I think you can you can give that to your audience. I think we're ready for that. <laughs> so let's talk about Scream 7 a little bit. Scream 7 has a new listing on Production Weekly. Shout out to UK for sending this my way. It references a working title of Scar Tissue. Now I was ready to dig into this until I searched Scar Tissue in Atlanta and discovered that Scar Tissue is a project that is in fact shooting in Atlanta in 2025, which we know is when Scream is supposed to be shooting allegedly. But Scar Tissue is a is reportedly about the lead singer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Now this could be a coincidence and maybe Scream 7 does have a working title of Scar Tissue, but going off of what I've been able to track online, 
I'm more inclined to believe that this is an error on Production Weekly's end. Now, what is interesting is that it seems to suggest that Scream 7 is going to be shooting scenes at a Lionsgate production building. So time will tell if that's true. But yeah, that's really all I want to go over when it came to Scream 7. The fact that there was an alleged working title attached to it, scar tissue. If somebody can look something up and find any validity in this being Scream 7, then I will start to dig a little bit deeper. But when I searched up scar tissue, the only thing I found was a film about the leader of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So that makes me think that Production Weekly has some things miss or has some things it's not listing correctly production weekly is reliable but it's not always correct and i think this is an instance of them being wrong because it's just oddly convenient that i go to search scar tissue and an entirely different project came up the last time we went through this was when the movie was thought to be under the working title of blackbird but whatever <laughs> let's talk about saw 11 so saw 11 we know what's going through it and brad miska over at bloody disgusting is not making this any better for us. He says he has bad news that has not yet been reported on, but I just wanted to share my thoughts on what I think this bad news could be. Viewer Non gave us the insight that reportedly what's the problem is this conflict between the rights holders. I think Brad Miska might be about to expand on that problem and confirm what Viewer Non has been saying. I don't think that we're going to be getting the news that Saw 11 is canceled because the gif he used does encourage us to calm down so i don't think saw 11 will be canceled but i think he's going to expand on and maybe given give, give us some context as to what the current story is going to be for saw 11 or maybe we're going to have to learn that the film is going to be shifted not only into 2025 but it's going to shift out of 2025 now into 2026 which i'm okay with if you're going to take a while to come up with a film that's on the same level as Saw X, so be it. But if you can't come up with anything, I wouldn't be disappointed if you canceled it in the long run because Saw X was such a tremendous high note to go out on. I would hate for Saw 11 to come and be a bust and then make everybody think that the Saw franchise should have stayed dead after Saw X. But it's a business. It made money. So, of course, they're going to try to do Saw 11 sooner rather than later as long as everything can work out with the rights holders. I think Brad Miska is just going to expand on what Viewer Non has already told us about. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all of my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.